Our guest today is Dr. Li Lu, a Chinese medicine practitioner and licensed acupuncturist. She's here today to discuss some of the great benefits of Chinese medicine. Dr. Li Lu, welcome to the program. Thank you. First of all, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, uh, I came to this country about 16 years ago. Uh, originally in China, I graduated from medical school. And just one day when I um, <clears throat> do the exam, one symptom, there are so many different possibilities. I you know, decide I cannot you know, practice the traditional Western medicine anymore. Then I go back to the traditional Chinese medical school. So I got a degree. And um, so I came to America to practice as a you know, Chinese you know, a medicine practitioner, get licensed acupuncture. And uh, so my belief in life is helping as many people as possible. And uh, when I come to the USA, I find out uh, people, you know, here, uh, still the Western, you know, medicine is great, you know, practice. But again, I think uh, people, they need a lot of education on what is natural medicine. People still get confused. You know, I re still remember the first couple of years when I practiced as acupuncturist. People ask me the question like, do you need um, religion belief for it to work? Mm. Actually, it's not. It's very scientific and a very objective thing. So, so I find out there's a lot of uh, things we need to communicate, like uh, we need to communicate to know more about what is the traditional Chinese medicine, what it can help you, you know, for your life. Because the uh, many things we find out in this country is not just the, you know, the symptom control thing. Most people in their life, like you have migraine, it's not necessary surgery or medication can help. And the traditional Chinese medicine, we offer acupuncture and herb and the nutritional, which can help a lot. So in a way, we work on the function of the body. We work on to improve the optimum health of the body. And also we work on to improve people's diet, which in a way, and uh, whatever we can do is like a team, so, yeah. Well, when were you first introduced into acupuncture? Was it here or in China? Well, my practice of acupuncture is here. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I was very young, okay. I was about five or six years old, actually I had the experience to go to the acupuncture clinic because at that time, you know, I was brought up by my grandparents, okay. and I hang out a lot with my aunts and their friends. Their friends usually go to the Chinese medical practitioner. They were br brought me with them. So I got a lot of experience in my childhood. I saw what acupuncture was done in the clinic and how it helped people to get well and get better. Now your clients, are they mostly Chinese, or do you have some of the Westerners as that come in for Mostly, clients? actually, it's the Westerners, so yeah. And uh, you know, it's a surprising me to see that uh, acupuncture used in China a lot. We use that for neuromuscular things like stroke, like a bowel palsy, like a uh, multiple sclerosis. But here in this country, people will have more interest in weight loss, fertility, depression. So it has a much more you know bigger variety of the practice. Smoking so, cessation is that smoking more? definitely, and uh, of course we also help people with alcoholism. They want to stop drinking alcohol. So. Um, so the practice pretty much cover almost every little part you can think of. And, so uh, explain what exactly is acupuncture? Acupuncture by definition is the insertion of hair thin needles on a certain point of the body, try to reestablish the energy or unblock the energy to help you know, the body function at the optimum. So I'll give you an example. Think about how the water flows. You know? And uh, whenever you see a waterfall like a waterfall flows, and in the area, you have like a little stone. If the little stone caught the water flow, what happened? You're going to have a lot of dirt, you know, a lot of blockage in that area. So acupuncture, we define the meridian, which is energy flow in the body. So if we find certain area, you know, whenever the circulation doesn't flow very well, the energy doesn't flow well, so you'll get blockage, you know. And the, by blockage, people may have pain, may have skin issues, may have fatigue, could be any symptom just by you know, the result of the blockage. And acupuncture, we will you know, define where is the blockage and based on which meridian, based on where is the symptom, we will define which meridian that is connected to. By insertion needle on that specific point, it will help open up the whole channel. It's open up the whole energy flow. So allow the body itself to have the, you know, the healing you know, ability so that the body can take care of whatever underlying cause is. Now, how, how deep is the needle inserted? Usually, I would say mostly like a quarter to a half inch, so it's pretty, pretty shallow. And still, people can feel a lot of sensations. So it doesn't and need to be painful. it's not painful. 
most people feel very relaxing, just contrary to most the, the people you know thinking. Because everybody come here say I'm the first time you know here, don't hurt me. I said okay, but a lot of time once I insert a needle, most people don't feel a thing, and the people usually feel very sleepy, feel very relaxing, and then many times we can hear the snoring from the treatment rooms because people can have you know a little bit nice nap you know during the session. So. Now, some of the things that you mentioned acupuncture use for is kind of like behavioral type of issues. What yes. about medical issues? I mean, you did mention migraines. Right. Medical issues, we do work on, for example, people have high cholesterol or high blood pressure or thyroid issues. Those are the things, you know, we can measure to see what the, you know, results. But, uh, you know, our goal is to try to help the body to, re to establish a function. So the body, so high blood pressure, for example, is a symptom. But we are more interested in what's behind it. Why the body have high blood pressure? Could be a sign that too much stress, not enough sleeping, or the body is asking for some nutrients to support, or the body may ask for the muscle you know, to relax a little bit more, or the body may ask for helping the heart a little bit. So there could be a lot of reasons behind it. And our job is to find it, define it, and help the body so that the body can have its own ability to help instead of, you know, Western doctor, they will use a drug to alter the symptom, but our job is find out what's behind it so that the person not only can work on that, but also in the future can prevent that condition. For the elderly, acupuncture can be very beneficial for them for treating things such as arthritis and poor circulation. Right, yes. How does that work? Well, uh, there is actually a, there's, um, you know, a curling uh, photographer, or there's a, you know, you can use a special camera. What they, what they do is they use a needle on the arthritis area knee, they will take the photos every five minutes and they will see literally the circulation will be improving in that area and the swollenness can be reduced. You can visually see that. But ideally acupuncture is a process induce your body to produce beta endorphin, which is a natural painkiller. We call the wellness hormone. Just like when you do the exercise, you feel great. Even if you have pain, you can tolerate it a little bit better. So that's the same exact idea. So once we put needles, your body has more beta endorphin producing. So you give you more tolerance to the pain. And at the same time, we will select the, the point which is helping the energy and circulation flow in that area also deliver more nutrients to the area who needed help. For example, like your knee, which also helping the knee to recover stronger, you know, so that you have more resistance to the weather. And a lot of time, you know, during the weather, like rainy days or cloudy days, you can be like a little weather indicator because your knee hurts, right. you know. But ideally, and the people after the acupuncture, in general, they have better circulation and the immune system can be stronger. And uh, in general, people just have more resistance to pain. Well, now, how about the, the natural process of the development of the human body? Uh, for something like menopause, is it hormone replacement type of right. thing too? Can it, will, can it affect the hormone levels and at right. least make the symptoms uh, yes. easier? Yeah, I'm glad you asked this question because I treat a lot of people, especially like a menopausal, you know, uh, symptom. Uh, whenever, because, you know, I always say women like flowers, mm -hmm. men like bushes. <laughs> men need a little bit, you know, low care, but the women like flower, they need a lot of care and they also need some special nutrients to be functional. And uh, think about women. You go through the you know cycle. You go through the you know child you know labor, and also go through menopause. But again, menopause is a symptom. It's not a disease. That means it's a normal function. But we do need to understand why we need to work on that. And uh, it's not just um, traditional hormone replacement therapy. You know now they will already know it can causing the risk of the breast cancer going more. And uh, when a woman suffers menopause, basically you see the hot flashes, you know, you can see the poor sleeping, weight gain, you know, also bad temper, you know. You possibly you can, you can tell <laughs> a lot than I do. So, but again, uh, acupuncture recognize that, you know, traditional me medicine, we recognize that is a kind of dysfunction. Means there's an imbalance between the heart and kidney, okay? Heart is like a fire. You have a lot of fire, warmer energy. Kidney is like a water. So basically, her, uh, you know, the heart and the kidney, water and the fire energy, they kind of uh, balance each other. Similar way like the river, you have some water, you know, like vapors, you know, evaporate. And also you have the rain falling from the heaven to the earth. It's a very similar way how to explain to. And, uh, you know, women, whenever reach the menopause, you know, estrogen is low. So we said estrogen more like a water energy goes low. And your progesterone, which is fire energy, is still high. So very similar, just like a woman during the pregnancy. 
very hot, you know, and uh, you don't have cycle, it's very exact, uh, you know, the same, same symptom. And uh, when we do acupuncture, I find the great result is uh, I have a couple of women, they feel very hot, you know, when they're in the treatment room, they even couldn't tolerate the, the temperature. And they asked me to actually lower the temperature for a couple of degrees. But right after the acupuncture, they feel fine. Their body is just cooling off because the body reached a new balance. So what it does, think about this. Your body like a volcano. You have a lot of heat. What happened? You know, Because the heat goes to the, all the way up to the head. But acupuncture kind of like to dig a little hole, release that tension from the body so they won't go all the way to the head. That's why all the w women with menopause, they feel the symptom in the head. Emotional, they feel hot flashes. It's not on the feet. The feet actually on the opposite side. The feet usually they feel cold, but on the head they feel a lot of heat. You know, that's what happened. So, so that's yeah. that pressure release valve. Yes. So think about that. That's the most simple way to you know explain. But on the other side, the acupuncture, the needle, they promote a gentle flow. That gentle flow very similar to the hormone flow. So whenever you have better hormone flows and uh, you better, and also needle because it's made of metal, it has a very cooling effect. Uh. So that's why it's good for inflammation, like arthritis. Very good for heat, fever ish, issues. And very good for skin, like acne ish, because that's cooling your body, especially cooling the brain. And our brain needs to be cooled a lot, believe <laughs> me. <so. laughs> well, we're gonna take a real yeah. quick break. We're here with Dr. Li Lu, a licensed acupuncturist and Chinese medicine practitioner. Uh, so, Dr. Li Lu, uh, besides being a licensed acupuncturist, there are other Chinese remedies that yes. you specialize in. Can you tell me about some of those? We, uh, besides acupuncture, we also do ear staples, which we use for cravings for people who want to lose weight. Ear staples. Ear staples. And also we do cupping. You know, cupping therapy, one, you know, once is very popular in Hollywood because a lot of stars, they recognize the, the benefits. Helping muscular, you know, tension, pain. And also we do Chinese herbal remedies. And also we have a nutritional program, which is helping people change their diet, especially, you know, nowadays a lot of people have the food sensitivities, especially kids, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you about some ear stapling. Yeah, okay. Are you stapling your ears to the? Yeah, we put a special needle on the ear, certain point, and then before each meal, whenever the client want to eat something, for example, a cake, usually that's the, you know, either a cake or chocolate, they will massage in the ear, which give the feedback of the brain that, okay, that's too sensitive to me. Because by doing the ear staple on the ear, it will change the taste of the food. Mm. So the client will say, oh, the cake is so sweet, I cannot handle that. This way they will reduce taking the cake, or you know, at least reduce the, the quantity, which way helping lose the weight. Yeah. And what is cupping? Cupping is a kind of like a suction cup. You know? mm -hmm. Traditionally, it's done with alcohol. You know, we burn it with a fire, with a little glass jar. It's very entertaining, but nowadays we use more like plastic, we use a palm. So cupping is with the, you know, the certain pressure apply to a certain area. For example, you have shoulder pain. So we will put the cups there, pumping it to the way that um, it, once you remove the pressure, it helps you move the circulation quicker. So basically it's more you know, for muscular you know, stiffness. Now, I, I remember there was a trend that for a while, um, a massage trend that used acupuncture pressure points. Is yes. that as effective or is that effective uh, or do you really need to have the needle insertion? Okay, so we call, in Chinese medicine, we call that Tui Na. Oh. Tui means push, Na means pull, push and pull. So, And a lot of American actually tourists go to China, they want to experience that. But I can tell you, next day they couldn't get off the bed. Mm -hmm. It's a very intensive massage. Because uh, you know, those practitioners were trained to using this type of Chinese massage to help get rid of some health issues so that they work very hard. It's totally different than Swedish massage. And uh, you know, yeah. yeah. Much more intense. Yeah, but actually, Tui Na is very good for a lot of muscular skeletal issues. But there is a difference between insertion of the needle and not insertion of the needle. As I mentioned before, Needle itself is metal, which has a lot of cooling effect. Mm -hmm. And the massage, a lot of time, has a warming effect. Okay. So they can have totally different effect on the body. But we usually, in our practice, we will combine whatever the modality together, whichever the person needs. For example, if this person has a lot of inflammation, a lot of arthritis, we will consider to do acupuncture. And if this person always have a cold hands, cold feet, we will also consider to do some twin arm massage as well. So it's not just a standard, this is what you're going to get simply because you're breathing. Right. You're actually doing an evaluation just like Western medicine. Right. We're recommending the treatments for it. 
Yeah, everybody remember, no two leaves are the same. So each individual very, very uniquely designed. So, you know, you have a different background, you eat different food, you, you live in a different house, different environment, of course, you get a different complaints. So we will design a program very individualized. We tailor to each individual's need. So that nothing, we, we don't say just recommend one remedy. For two people with exact same headaches in the same spot, treatment could be totally different. And what words of encouragement can you give to, to people to try and lead, lead productive, healthy, healthy lives? I would say invest on your health today. Don't wait tomorrow, because maybe tomorrow you'll be died. So. But again, you know, nowadays I see people drive a very fancy car, live a very fancy house, but they care the least of their health. And for me, I can always think that if you have roof leak, you want to repair immediately. But people, they have pain. They can tolerate to the, you know, to the point that they couldn't work. So my encouragement is invest on your health today. Be very preventative. Be very cautious. Be very you know, uh, connected with yourself. Don't wait till last minute. Because so once your body collapses, it's very hard to reverse. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? Uh, at this point, I just uh, you know, encourage everybody, just um, whenever you feel it's true to yourself and you know you are the best doctor for you because you know everything. You know what your life looks like. No doctor is as bad as you are. So start to take the responsibility and care for you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we hope that you have learned some vital information about the great benefits of traditional Chinese medicine. I'm your host, David Bowl, and reminding you to be healthy, active, and well-informed. We'll see you next time on Prescription for Life.